Hello, Guardians, and welcome to Destiny Reset, Episode 201. This show is about anything and everything related to the Destiny franchise. If you love playing Destiny 2 as much as we do, you're in the right place. This reset, we dig into all the latest Bungie news from E3 and beyond. Welcome special guest Carolina Gamer 99 to talk about Worlds First and Crown of Sorrow, and fit in some special feedback from community members. Hello, Guardians, and welcome. It's Arrow Knights, and of course, Cyborg Sasquatch. Hey, dude. Hello, Guardian. How's it going? It's going good, man. How are you? I'm great. I figured I would lead the episode off with a nice, crispy dude. Dude. What's up, dude? Man, I'm in recovery this week, dude. Yeah? The last week was like no sleep. <laughs> no sleep for a week. Well, and, that was... Uh, I mean, I was slept. that... Business Hard or Tuesday. raid? No, raid this stuff. was like <laughs> too much destiny. Yeah. Destiny over overdose. It was a lot of destiny, a lot of grinding. I was going to say, we don't have to wait till reset. I mean, you did that for one goal, right? And that was for the jacket. And God, did you guys pull to get it that off? jacket? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yes. Like, excellent. The last hour, really, like literally like 4 30 in the morning, we're done. <laughs> wow, dude. Not proud of it, but I am. Hey, yeah, I would uh, be. Yeah, so I've been taking it a little lighter this week, trying to catch up on some sleep and also keep up with what else is going on in E3 and Destiny and everything else this week. So, yeah, interesting summer so far. It's hard enough to keep up with all the Destiny news. I, I don't even, I used to, I don't even attempt to try to keep up with all the E3 news that just drops left and right these days. Yeah, I managed to watch the uh, Microsoft uh, mm -hmm. Because that was Watch a big, the big one. players. Yeah, and uh, caught kind of the highlights on Bethesda and Nintendo. Um, and then from there, I just kind of like caught stuff on my Twitter feed. Right. Because I was like sleeping and working, <laughs> everything else that's going on. So, yeah, but good week. I mean, you know, great, great stuff. How about you? I know. What's yeah, dude, on? yeah. Yeah, it's been a good week. Busy week, uh, family and and uh, Destiny. I try to fit in some Destiny, a couple late mm -hmm. nights. Um, yeah, dude, there's just always so many opportunities to use your downtime, you know, when you have it to just take in all this news and info. It's like I really need to f have like, like a 20-minute window or maybe even just five-minute time frame of my day where I just don't think about anything <laughs> it's like so easy like okay wait i'm doing this all right i can i can do this while i'm doing that you know it's like i'm, I'm at work like what can i listen to while i'm working there's you always it's like multitasking 24 7 these days you gotta like yeah there's just so much down sometimes <laughs> there's so much to cram sometimes um because i spend a lot of time in the car at work like i always want to try to be listening to like a book or something mm -hmm. informative. So I'm like using that time wisely, you know, if I'm not on the phone. Um, it, but sometimes I'll just catch myself. I've been in the car for 15 minutes and just been in total deep thought. And I'm like, what am I supposed to be doing right now? Oh yeah, yep. I'm driving somewhere. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And there's only certain things you can listen to. Like for example, if I'm at work and like getting heavy into some work, an example of something that I can listen to is like the giant bomb cast because you can miss decent portions of that and be totally okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean, you know, like it's a good kind of casual, they cover yeah, information, it's easy to listen to, but you can't listen to like lore videos because it just right. doesn't work. <laughs> you got to really focus on some stuff, right? Yep. 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 Yeah. So that's a balancing Absolutely. act as well. But, uh, um, yeah. But hey, we got a lot to cover this week, and we yes. had a special guest interview, so we're going to keep this show on the rails. As per usual these days. Yeah, so much so much to talk about, and only two hours. That's all we get mm -hmm. at the most. So announcements, we got a couple things to cover real quick. I'll let you do the second one. The first one, however, is a uh, shout out to Destiny's best dad. Happy Father's Day, Orcs. Yes. R.I.P. Yes. The best Destiny dad. Definitely. Who we murdered. 
happy Father's Day out there to all the guardians who are daddies. For sure. Yes, yeah. of course. Happy Father's Day to you, Cyborg. Yeah, thank you. You too, man. Thank you. All right, what else do we have, though? Yes, uh, follow-up from that. Totally different, but just a reminder, we did a giveaway. We talked about it last episode. The tweet is live, has been live. Episode 200 uh, giveaway that we're doing. It is a collector's edition for Shadowkeep coming out this fall. And to uh, Blue Mike, uh, a couple of choices. For example, the Nano and or the Blue Yeti. We're going to give away two different mics. This will be three total winners. One giveaway uh, tweet gleam uh, thing we got going on, but three different winners. Uh, this will be going on until Friday. Is it the 21st? Is that right? That's right. So Friday the 21st. We're going to throw up a tweet again, probably as you're listening to this or at reset, just to remind you guys, but we will announce the winners on the next episode. So definitely go enter if you haven't yet. There you go. Win some that stuff. Is. Yes. We always love giving away of the stuff and somebody's going to win it. Don't be the one that never enters the contest and never wins because you don't try. <laughs> you don't enter because you never win. But, but I mean, you don't I, win I get it. Because you never enter. I get it. See the logic there. Yeah. Well, All right. there you have it. That's the announcements. All right. News time. No tangents. Oh boy, because it's E3, there's lots of stuff crawling out of the woodwork this week, but there's some very pertinent Destiny news. We're going to cover the highlights. There's a couple things that there was a ton of interesting stuff, and we just can't get into it all because of time this week, but we'll get to that. Uh, but first off, of course, we're going to start off with this week at Bungie. This week at Bungie, we're watching Guardians Hunt for the Truth, and not the truth truth, but the gun truth, right? Mm, yep. Yep, if you jumped onto Destiny this week and you went and played some Menagerie, then you got a quest for the truth. Do you have truth yet? I don't. No, I, I, I haven't like barely finished. into it. Man, sometimes I feel like I've thought this since the seasonal approach started. Like some of these quests that drop, I feel like they drop a little too soon. Like this could have easily been another reset or two. I know, I mean, I know people grind through the content, but like I'm just getting my teeth sunk into the menagerie and grinding for those weapons dude and like truth yeah. quest already drops you know i think they try to spread them out though because we we're usually getting like two or three yeah true. exotic quests per season mm -hmm. and you don't want to have all that happening on top of each other right oh for sure yeah yeah definitely i just i'm i think i'm in the second step like it's definitely getting gonna get pushed back into the season for me i don't know how many guardians feel that yeah. way but the other thing is too it's kind of on that little spot of like i don't know if i have an exotic slot for it i mean obviously i'd use it in <laughs> crucible um but i don't know when or if or why i would use it i like it it's just fun man yeah it's just fun it's a fun it's, option it's that original truth tracking yeah no yep. gun in the game has it grenades and horseshoes i think are still on the thing i think yeah buddy is yeah. that what it is i, I thought that so. was the i thought that was the galley perk no, I think that's uh, I I could be wrong. I feel like I saw that this week, but uh, okay, I might maybe be I'm wrong. wrong. Somebody tell I me if I'm wrong. Close it. I'll check when I get it. Either way, you get to you can hold three in the mag. That yes, I mean, come yes. On. I just have a hard time putting that last word away, especially with uh, what I'm gonna talk about. What I got this reset. Mm. Ooh, ooh, a drop I got. Shame. Anyways, tease, tease, tease. Okay. All right, so yeah, Season of Opulence. It's rocking and rolling. We got a new boss in the Menagerie to fight. Mm -hmm. That's pretty fun. I like that. I like bosses. I like killing them. Yes. Um, what else happened this reset? Um, of course, the past reset. If you were around the, uh, you know, the Crown of Sorrows, that was the whole thing. We'll get to that. Um, Iron Banner is coming this next reset if you're going to be on and playing and you like the PvP. They're going to be doing some, yeah, of course, every season they're trying a new iteration on trying to get Iron Banner to work. <laughs> uh, eventually they'll land on something that people like. I, I miss it working. The Dirt Fam loves yeah. Iron Banner, man. I miss it working. It's so so this season's Iron Banner armor is now acquired through a quest. Each armor piece will be granted upon completing its associated quest step. Uh, as a powerful reward. So that's definitely helpful if you're mm -hmm. trying to grind up some power um, and you want to do it through PvP. After you unlock the armor piece, you'll be able to reacquire it 
with random rolls through the Iron Banner Reputation Package and Match Rewards. Um, also worth noting that it can now roll with enhanced perks. I think that's a big deal right there. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, that's the, one of the biggest ones. Yep. Definitely need that. If you're a PvP player and you want enhanced perks, you have a very limited uh, set of, of drops that you can get those from, and most of them are not PvP. So I think that's a, a bonus right there that may just get more people in just to kind of grind those out, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, what else? If you're a veteran player who earned Iron Banner ornaments in the past... Uh, the season's armor is compatible with all the year one Iron Banner ornaments. Uh, new weapons have been added to the packages and have a higher chance to drop on the first package you redeem. New weapons. Ooh. Mm. We've got new Iron Banner shaders, an emblem, and a sparrow that may be earned through objectives that must be completed during this season. Um, also worth noting, Iron Banner bounties no longer unlock direct purchase for Iron Banner gear because you get it through the quest now. So that's a little bit different. They got a preview up of the armor, sticking with that uh, Shogun theme, if you're mm-hmm. familiar. And they show off a rocket launcher and a shot fun that would be available. Both Soros variety. Pretty cool little uh, emblem. And of course, we're going to have Valor Boosts available next week in Iron Banner and the rest of Crucible. Um, and that's it. Yeah, dude. See you in the banner. Man, it seems like on paper, like everything's there for Iron Banner. I just I don't know why it still feels like it's not landing. Hopefully, hopefully this will do some things. The enhanced perks, like you said, that's huge. That's a big deal. The community's been asking for that for a little while, and that's an example of the team listening. I mean, that's a small yeah. thing, but a big thing. So Yeah, no, I, I think that right there is like a great example of them paying attention to that need and introducing it into an activity that could use the population. So smart. Yep. Wicked smart. (laughs) Um, Raid stats. This was kind of cool. So crown of sorrow. They mentioned, of course, world's first, which we're going to talk to in a little bit. Six guardians, of course, got that achievement. Um, 24 hour completions of the uh, wrath of, what is it? Crown of sorrow. I don't know why I want to say wrath. 535 guardians completed that in 24 hours. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. Um, and then this figure was actually really surprising. That was the side of me, but um, 45,475 guardians completed it in week one. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's awesome. So congrats to everyone that managed to best Galron, our new buddy. <laughs> um, they have a reminder if you did earn the code and, and completed the uh, the raid in the first week and you want to purchase the cool raid jacket, you've got until 11.59 Pacific Daylight Time on June 18th to complain, to not complain, to claim your Bungie <laughs> reward code and place your order. Uh, they mentioned Dimji and Cosmo both completed it the night before the deadline. Congratulations, my dudes. So, awesome job, community. Did you order your jacket already? I'm I haven't ordered it. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to order it tomorrow. I was actually like, I was totally like super excited to get this jacket because it's a cool jacket. And then I almost started to get on the fence about it because it's under $50. <laughs> it's a lot, man. It's, a, it's as much as and I was like, you know, edition. I don't like need a jacket. I mean, it's a cool jacket. I can wear it. Every event, though, man. And you got Guardian Con coming up. It's yeah. Cool. Well, but, this, you know, I'm not going to have the jacket, jacket until, like, Florida. the fall or something. <laughs> and the weather and there is hot and humid. Definitely not going to wear it in July. Yeah. Um, but then, like, I still have to order all my title pins. Yeah. <sighs> Which you're, like, but I think I'm going to go ahead and get titles. it. I think I'm going to go ahead and get it because I earned it and I don't have any yet. And it's a cool jacket. Yeah, you got to do it, man. Chalice on the inside. Got to do it. I'll I mean, it's it easy for me to like say. One person <laughs> one day might recognize what it is and be like, yeah. wow. And yeah, that's what it'll be worth. You know, <laughs> like that, one, <laughs> that one person is like, whoa. And that was $150. That's my money's worth. Yeah. 
I mean, that is a lot of money. It's kind of like uh, the shipping. revoker for me. I know it's I'm not having to spend money, but I don't even really know how much I want that sniper. But it's all about the challenge, right? And you're yes. gonna have something to show. That for was it. It, the real reward. Was the fringe? I mean, the challenge that we got along the way. Yeah, not the that's quite an accomplishment, my friend. Yeah. Um, next up. We got a little Q&A over in Destiny Player Support. So first, um, we had Destiny Hotfix 2.5.0.3 this week. Fixed a few issues with uh, like chalice upgrades and something with Sturm and Drang. Sturm and Drang, every patch gets a patch. <laughs> <laughs> the most patch gun. Um, but most importantly, we've got a 2019 fall FAQ, a.k.a. a FAQ if you will. Um, and this has to do with cross save. So this is really important. Uh, I'm going to give you the highlights, but go and read this. And I'm also going to give you some things that they're throughout like really weird scenarios. People were asking about on Twitter and stuff, but here's the long and short of it. So everybody that has destiny to, it will be converted to what's called Destiny 2 New Light. And you'll maintain all your prior purchases and entitlements. So it's not going to be its own separate game file. Um, Forsaken content available in this program includes free roam on all destinations, the Stripe Crucible playlist, Gambit and Gambit Prime, and select annual pass content. Now they say, what's not included? Forsaken content only available with purchase includes the Forsaken campaign, year two raids and dungeons and exotic quests. Now this keeps getting asked. I feel like it's a no brainer, but do you need to purchase destiny two on each cross save platform separately? Not for new light. That will be for free on steam, Xbox and PlayStation. However, if you want to play Forsaken content or if you want to play, shadow keep content you're gonna have to buy that on every platform because your purchase is tied to the platform you purchased it on mm-hmm. you have to spend some money this is how this works right yep it's a classic um, yeah. conversation cross play you wouldn't and you could still play with your friends because you're playing on the same platform but cross save you're hopping around platforms so that's yes. right but here's a cool thing Cross save will preserve all gear, character, and items across all platforms, regardless of entitlements. So, uh, one of the cool things is if you earn gear on an expansion related content like an exotic, you can still take that gear over to the Destiny 2 New Light if you don't have that expansion on, say, PC and play with that same gear. It won't be locked. I think that's a great feature, personally. Mm-hmm. If you just about, want to go play Crucible with your buds or Strikes or whatever, right? All the things they have to think about with the cross save, dude. Is, yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. Furthermore, you will not be able to merge characters, items, or triumphs from different accounts. You will choose your active account for cross save, and that will be what you're able to use on different platforms, but it will not delete or alter the data of other accounts on those platforms Mm -hmm. good to know yeah i mean obviously whichever your main is um also big question answered this week um stadia will not have crossplay with pc or any other platforms it will be in its own ecosystem this was a big question and some people were like oh how do you not know this but stadia is essentially streaming a pc version of a game to you Mm -hmm. So the question was, is it going to be with other PC players? And the answer is no. So there you go. RIP to the five people playing Stadia this fall. I don't, I just, I don't see this as like, it's going to take some time to get a lot of people on that platform. And I see Stadia users as like, oh, I just, I want to be able to like go run bounties or whatever while I'm mm-hmm. traveling. And that makes total sense. Um, 
Hopefully this will also be on xCloud and you can do the same without having to use Stadia, you know? Right, yeah. Yeah, you seem like you're... I'm all about xCloud, dude. Yeah. I am... I've noticed. So hard. I I got X on my chest. (laughs) Um, I love Xbox and Microsoft. They're they're killing it right now, man. They've been working on it for a bit. They're doing all right. They're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. Doing pretty good. Um, There is a... uh, My best tool, the best place I would point you to, go to destinyroundup.com. They have a great post on this Q&A that's like a bunch of information pulled from Reddit and Twitter um, of people asking like really specific random questions about how does this work? Well, how would this work? Um, there's a lot of details like certain things like forges and reckoning and menagerie and stuff. Like they don't have details on what is included along those lines mm-hmm. with the free and the not free. Um, there's a whole bunch of little details that they talk about. Some have answers and some are like, wait and find out. But if you have those, go check that out first. And then, um, uh, if you don't get your answer, your, your question answered there, maybe go to Reddit or Twitter or the Bungie.net forums, ask your question, shoot your shot. <laughs> um, next up we get the movie of the week. Did you see this guy that recreated the Trevor and Unity? I saw this a couple of weeks ago. It's pretty yes. funny. I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like that it. was good. I had to scroll down a little bit. Uh, yeah. That's great. That was funny. And that. then um, next video was Blink just got better. And what really cracked me up is this guy. The first like three minutes is him just trying to get Astrocyte Verse to drop. <laughs> he gets like five catalysts and like three other exotics. Uh, finally drops for him and he just goes ham in the crucible with astrocyte verse i also got astrocyte verse nice. last week and played around Dude. with it and man it feels like a lot of d1 blink a lot that's what i've heard I, i've gotten quite scary. a few exotics but uh yeah i'll talk i'll probably talk about it and reset <laughs> nice you i'm know. excited to hear about kind it kind of i mean you would just wait okay all right um, so that is the TWAB this week. Um, they mentioned there's more coming this season and more coming this fall. Stay tuned. Um, in other news this week, of course, there was E3 and um, there's, of course, a whole like PR media blitz going on. There was a panel um, that Bungie did at E3. I watched that. I, did, I didn't really glean much new from that. Um, that we haven't heard yet, besides the fact that Luke Smith mentions uh, xCloud in a positive way. <laughs> he didn't yeah. say, yeah, mm-hmm. we're coming to xCloud, but he said, yeah, we're thinking about the fact that people are going to be using these services and like how they're going to be using them and et cetera. So at least mm-hmm. helps me to know like they're keeping that in mind, and I'm hoping it, it is supported. You well, know? you remember way back uh, – wasn't it when Bungie tweeted out their um, independence from Activision and Phil Spencer replied? Um, oh, yeah. He was like, can't wait to work with y'all. Right. And, you know, that's just a tweet. But, I mean, yeah. obviously it's a smart move to have already been working on sure. that relationship a bit again. You know, not, yeah, and they've, not like, partner. Some, We've been there. There's some guys at <laughs> Xbox that play Destiny. I mean, mm-hmm. Yeah. It don't hurt. <laughs> um, Definitely. In other news, there was, and I actually missed this, but there was, um, if you're familiar with the podcast, Kotaku Split Screen. Um, I think it was, was it just Luke Smith or did they have I think it was else? Luke Smith and Noseworthy. Uh, okay. I believe, yes. We've got some. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm looking at Mark Noseworthy. Yeah, so. um, yeah it seems like those There's two, a whole bunch of stuff in yeah, there. Yeah, there's a ton. We kind of put some bullet points in our notes here, but... Um, and one thing I didn't want to forget to say, Noseworthy's been really hitting home on Twitter, uh, you know, because he got hit with the crossplay questions. Um, and one of these we'll mention here from yeah. uh, Jason, but he's been really hitting home on on Twitter. I, I saw another tweet again today or yesterday where he quoted somebody and, and basically was talking about Stadia again. And just they're being real transparent about the fact that like cross save was their goal for this fall. 
and cross play isn't like out of the question. It's just right now it wasn't feasible and they wanted to hone in on one of them and cross save is what they honed in on. Um, yeah, so this it, is what he just, said, because PC Gamer and uh, Game Informer put up articles about Destiny 2 and Stadia not having crossplay with PC. And Noseworthy quoted it and said, we've already mentioned that we'd love to bring crossplay to Destiny 2. There's no mm-hmm. policy or technological barrier preventing us from including Stadia. We'd be looking to include every platform. This year, though, we're focused on delivering cross-save to all platforms. Yeah, and I've seen him like I think the one I saw today or yesterday is he quoted PC Gamer because they had a you yeah. know like a catchy heading yeah, that said something, one. and he's like, "Okay, listen, let me like I'm gonna say it one more time, <laughs> like you know, and it, not that they meant anything by it, you know, they're just I don't think they did. I think he's just clarifying, you know, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. It's just all clarification. Jumping their case, like, oh, how is this, you know, a big deal or whatever? But it's just yeah, the fact is people wanted to clarify, like who's going to be playing with who on stadia you know right you yeah, yeah and it's know. not you're not even just stadia but the the bigger question of cross play in general and it's nice it sounds like you know they're their own boss now i mean he's saying yeah. you know it's it's not that it's out of the question it's just you know they have to be realistic about what they can do and they're achieve in, in what period of time so i mean yeah. i gotta say I did not think we would be getting cross save by this fall. So I know yeah, that no kidding, man. that's for, for people who have multiple platforms, you know, it stinks that, you know, if you don't, you're not really going to benefit from it to play with other people, but it's a start, right? So yeah, it's a surprise. It that a we're getting that. Yeah. But uh, I'll yeah, take so, that if that's all we get oh, to. Yeah, for sure, dude. I mean, I, I, but you know, again, coming from a guardian who has three platforms, including two and then a PC that can run D2, you know, some people don't have that, but, um, you know, it's a start. If if I didn't, I would at least, you know, I think be excited because it's, you know, it shows what's to come in the future, hopefully. So right. it just seems like it's, they're definitely breaking down the barriers, which I believe we'll get into here in just a second. I can't remember. I think we put this in a bullet point. So this, this split screen interview, we put some of the ones that, you know, we thought were the key ones. Um, for example, you know, Luke Smith, they asked him, you know, Jason Trier asked him about MMO using the terminology of MMO, they're not, you know, scaring, uh, you know, running away from that term anymore. Yeah. And he basically says, Destiny 2 has enough MMO-like tendrils that avoiding that term any longer isn't the right thing. They basically said, since Forsaken, they've kind of started to get, you know, enhance the RPG elements, um, which, you know, we saw in the Vidoc. They talk about, like, even double and down on that even more, the RPG elements of the game, which we know, you know, you're excited about. You've talked about it several times. And they say those things and enhancing the social game is what they feel like are, you know, key key things to, to focus on as well going forward. So the social game is a big part of it, right? And I, I mean, obviously cross yeah. and cross play help that. Um, but there's other aspects too, you know, that, that I'm sure they're, they're honing in on to to get rid of some of these barriers. So that's uh good to hear, man. It it just seems like it seems like they they have a good idea of of where they want the franchise to go and now they're in control of it for the most part, right? So I sure hope so. Hopefully. Anyways, artifacts. <laughs> Very specifically they talk about artifacts. Uh they're asked about those. Um we saw those kind of a little bit in the Vidoc, and I think mm-hmm. they even said in the Vidoc that like the artifacts, you know, when fully specked out, could almost do have a perk similar to maybe what is almost as strong as what an exotic. I think one of the developers said that in it. But yeah, it seems you know, a be- lot like Rise of Iron. Mm-hmm. Yeah, inspired, right? Right. Yeah. They yeah, also and, mentioned and that these are going to be seasonally, yes, based like they all themed, themed. Yeah, they'll they'll, right? they'll expire almost at the end of a season, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It's going to be interesting, you know, because they they say in this interview, for example, the mod slots at the end of the column in the artifacts will be more impactful. They use this example. This isn't necessarily something that's going to be in the game, but an example is throwing a grenade can create a melting point style effect on enemies. So, again, not necessarily what exactly one's going to be, but just giving an 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 example of of how potent it could be, I guess. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. Any any subclass um, using mm-hmm. that artifact can throw their grenade and throw on a melting point, but you know that's damage buff. That's kind of crazy. That'd be dope. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. So 
anyways, moving on. Specifically, Jason asked him if they're bringing back Vex Mythic Cast from. Uh, is it? It's been so long. Is it Mythic Cast or Mythic Class? Class. It's Cast. Is it Cast? Vex Mythic Class. Man, I miss that sound. I don't. I mean, it used to be pretty potent in the Crucible uh, way back in the day. That thing kicked so bad, though, dude. <laughs> kicked so bad after they toyed with it a little bit. Oh um, yeah, after they made it actually yeah, have recoil. Yes, and not a laser beam of just absolute crazy damage yeah that was way back dude that's like back in the suros days remember when Sur- yeah, i mean suros like actually isn't bad right now but do you remember destiny suros was a beast mm-hmm. uh, anyways very specific quote their answer to that part of their answer was we're building this action mmo in a single evolving world that you can play anytime anywhere and then not everything is lost in the dark corners of time so an interesting quote, right? Dodging the question, but it's interesting because of the terms used, right? We're oh, yeah, building an action MMO a in a single, yeah, right? Evolving world. And then they go on to say, not lost in the dark corners of time. So basically, mm-hmm. in other words, we can do whatever we want, bring whatever back whenever we want. <laughs> yeah, of course they can. Course. Yeah. Will they is the question. So. I'm sure eventually they'll come up with some reason (laughs) yeah right to do something i know they're and i think you're even tiring of it a bit like some of the old old exotics coming back i still haven't hit that point especially seeing that there's a new one on the list this season um but uh i i can see it uh i i sense how you've i I see how you've you're starting to get there (laughs) i'm starting to get a little fatigued with it yeah yeah Yeah, i'd be okay with some new stuff yeah. Give me some new stuff to be Two new, for. one old, maybe. Um, yeah. yeah, something like that. All right, um, moving on. Go ahead, man. What, what's some new Yeah, others? they talked about D2 and file size. Uh, they're specifically asked, like, how do you keep adding to the game without these issues? Um, and that's something that they're, they're actually tackling in the technical limitations, and that can eventually definitely become a problem so right yeah mm-hmm. and th- an important thing to note i would i would encourage you if you're listening if you're really into destiny to go listen to this because aaron and i were talking about this before the show the the way that they're talking about destiny 2 and the, mm-hmm. the vibe we should have hit record the underlying yeah the underlying communication we're getting is that they are not releasing destiny three quote unquote anytime soon yeah right and yeah it seems like they even said specifically uh where i'm looking for the quote they definitely did they kind of put like a seem if i remember right some sort of time frame on the fact that they're supporting destiny 2 for a while yeah i think they even they even called out and said like 2020 is not destiny 3 right which Mm -hmm. is really not what anybody was expecting. So uh, that that's like a big deal. I've I've got to go in and listen to this more and get a better feel for it, but it's it's an interesting development and what it at least says is that they plan on supporting Destiny 2 a lot longer mm-hmm. than we may expect have expected. Yeah. Um and I, I think that's a good thing. For sure, I think yeah. That's a really yeah, no. good thing. Yeah, we kind of agreed on it. You know, I think they even hinted at it in the vidoc when they i'd have to go back and watch it again i watch it a couple times but you definitely even there i think get the sense yeah that destiny 2 um they're su- going to support it for a while and, and you and i were talking before the show like you mentioned and you know we've mentioned several times where it's like okay destiny is really even in the activision days and back you know whatever like like they say in that that quote we said a minute ago, a single evolving world, an action MMO, a single evolving world. Like you can play anytime, anywhere. It seems like I just get this vibe. You know, we've we've mentioned why you know other than marketing reasons, why have these huge reboot rebrand? You know, I know that they tried to reimagine some things with the launch of D two, but maybe supporting it for longer is their their motivation is to tweak out this content schedule and and different things like that and how they're going to do it. And maybe by the time destiny three gets here, it's maybe it's called destiny three. Maybe it's not, maybe it's destiny three and it's just a huge content drop in the fall. Like we see, you know, who knows? Um, It just seems like they're, they're going to take their time and 
just support D2 for a bit, which is, like you said, I think it's a good thing. So. Yeah, as long as it doesn't become a technical problem, like this. Oh, said, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it already that... is on PlayStation, dude. I have to, I have like a hundred and something free gigs on my PlayStation, mm-hmm. and I have to, for like, even this patch that just came out, um, I forget how many oh, gigs. yeah, man. I had, because and I know, you, have to... you know, PlayStation has that weird copying thing, and it does the whole spiel, but it literally, it makes you... I have 115 free gigabytes, and for five or six gigabyte download, I have to go delete. It's more than it was more than that this past time, but I had to go delete five or six more gigs of saved clips because it it wants. I think what's ha- what happens with it. I think I researched a while back. It wants the full size of the game, and it's insane. Yeah. It's in like it's already happening, and that's part obviously partly PlayStation. But you know, yeah. you think about this file just continuously getting bigger for yeah. the next two, three years. Yeah, they've they've which they acknowledge. We already said, and it's another bullet point we have on here. Like, they're uh, it's an issue. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's going to become more and more of an issue. So, um, yeah, the synopsis I'm looking at, which is over on Destiny Roundup, um, says it's it's hard to predict what they're going to do in 2020. Part of being a live service game is putting something out, testing it, learning some it from it. In October, they'll have much better information. They know they're going to add new worlds. They plan to try to plan for multiple future scenarios, and it's one of the hardest parts of development. They have a plan. They think it's pretty good, and they'll find out from the players if it's something really good or something that should change. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say they threw in some... There was a couple bits about Shadowkeep, too, like something about the Cosmodrome, something about the Dreadnought. So, like, who knows where we're going? It's, it doesn't sound like it's just the moon. Yeah, Spoilers. yeah, they, they and I think they said in there, um, they kind of, kind of like that quote they had earlier, kind of teasing a bit. They're they like to revisit places to see what's happened to them over the years we've been doing these other things, and I think they mentioned yeah. the dreadnought specifically in that as well. So who knows what that That's means? That's exciting. Yeah, yeah, That's very exciting. cool. So yeah. Anyways, one of the there's a lot again, like Cyborg said, you guys should go check this out. One of the last things. It was really cool, um, you know, to hear Luke Smith said, you know, Jason asked him about profit margins and player base. And with this model, you know, he's I think he was insinuating, you know, are you okay with a lower profit margin, lower player base, Um, you know, right now and, you know, whatever happens in the future. I guess hinting at the content structure right now, you know, it's it seems like it's going to be similar next year as well with a fall content drop obviously and then seasons after that um but luke smith you know i loved what he said he said they have a responsibility to make something that's awesome for our fans it's certainly easier to work when they're self-publishing um but they want to crush the barrier stopping people that are, that basically is stopping people from playing the game um you know yeah. there was more in that quote but that that really stood out you know and it's it just seems you just get the vibe of like they they always did before, you know, but it's just, it's especially, you know, quote unquote, on their own, you know, not that that changed a ton, but you can, you can just sense the passion, right? Even more right now, it seems like, like it's just coming through more obvious. Um, and, and of course, if they can get rid of these barriers, I mean, we're not, we're not oblivious. That, that means more money, right? I mean, we mentioned yeah. that last week, you know, it's, it's the passion to create it for themselves because they love doing it and also for the fans, which in turn is going to create more profit and that's fine for everyone because the game will be around longer. Mm -hmm. So anyways, I don't know. I I enjoyed, uh, it didn't seem like PR, you know, whatever. It just seems like honest answers from a passionate dev team, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I can't wait to go listen to this whole thing. So go check it out. Kotaku split screen. Uh, you can get it on iTunes, you can get it on YouTube, you know, all the major stuff. Um, or not iTunes, Apple Podcasts. iTunes is dead. <laughs> RP <laughs> iTunes. Um, yeah, we got to keep this moving though. So that's the major news this week. Uh, a lot of cool stuff, a lot of things to be excited about. Um, Arrow, how would you reset? Yeah, dude, my reset, man. It's I've actually got in several playtimes, play sessions. This reset, um, 
I forgot to mention, I think last episode, two resets ago, I, I went on a crazy Gambit Prime and Reckoning and got a full Sentry set. You're the Sentry Guardian as well, I think. I forgot to mention that. So I, I like nice. grinded that out uh, before Opulence started. So that was a blast. Anyways, this reset, I uh, did the power grind. Just been doing a powerful grind. I'm, I'm Without running the raid, of course, you know, these days. Uh, I hit 730, so not too bad. Two resets in. I'm just trying to do the milestones and all that good stuff. Um, yeah. I did finally take some time to get into the menagerie. I didn't. I hadn't really spent a whole lot of time in there because I played so much Crucible last reset. I love it, dude. I, I saw some posts and people were loving it and this or that. And you know, I'm always for wave based modes, but I'd only ran it like two or three times when we recorded 200. But I've ran it quite a bit this reset, and I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. It's cool that it's six players. I love the wave based, the different encounters. Um, it's really kind of hitting home with me as far as like a wave based mode goes and the combination of the chalice and I was grinding for, um, the beloved, uh, sniper. Is it beloved or is it? Yeah. No. Yes. Beloved. Yeah. Wait, are you in menagerie? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, I was grinding for that for my PVP. I love sniping, you know, in the crucible, of course. And, uh, I wanted that snapshot quick draw, um, roll dude. And I, I think on my fourth drop. Man, I got just an unbelievable roll on that sniper rifle with a handling masterwork. I could not believe it. Ooh, nice. Uh, Dude, it is so lightning fast moving in and out of that scope. It is unbelievable. I'll probably post some stuff on my channel, but super pumped. Took it in the crucible immediately. But, you know, getting back to Menagerie, I just, I love... The control, I saw a good post. I think it might have been on Reddit. The, The control of... The combination of RNG and player control is excellent in the menagerie, right? The gameplay is fun. The the wave base, the mechanics, the boss fights are fun. And then you have kind of control over your loot. That's super fun. Um, so anyways, I, yeah, that's I, I played some menagerie and spent some time in there and I've really been enjoying it. Did a little bit of Crucible. Trying, I think I need like 1,500 more glory for my uh, revoker. All right. Um, yeah, but other that's than that. Fair. Just squeezing in, squeezing in as much as I can, dude. What about you? Nice, dude. Yeah. Um. Whew, all right. Trying to. It's all a blur. After we recorded last week, I know it um, is a blur, dude. It's there's just I, so yeah, much stuff. We managed it. We managed. It. I'm going to talk about it some here in our next segment, but um, managed to to finish Crown of Sorrows. Uh, that was fun. Um, biggest challenge was getting all the team together on the right nights and having the time to do it that seems to be our challenge these days with raids it's not that they're like ungodly hard it's just having the time to do them when you're trying to do them blind oh yeah Um, sure but yeah i finished it you know super late uh monday night uh trying to get it done before uh for the uh, the week you know the reset ended so got that done with me and one of my buds uh that hung in there me and one guy left on the raid team that wanted <laughs> to stay up that late to do it and then uh some some great lfg guardians that were also dedicated and needed to pull it off and we all jumped in there and got it done and uh was really right. happy to do it man um it's very cool got a couple of, like cool guns i got like the scout and the auto rifle and i got some armor pieces um looking forward this weekend to jump in again get another clear um so yeah it was fun and then we like i forget what night it was brought in like a few other guardians their fan members and uh some other people like through the first couple encounters to show that to them um so that was fun so it was already like trying to teach people that before i'd even finish it that was interesting (laughs) um beyond that you know just Really, like, after reset, I've kind of taken it easy this week after that long grind. So oh, I sure, yeah, kind of yeah. started the truth quest and, like, just doing milestones here and there, doing some of the men- menagerie stuff um, to get uh, Imperials and, like, level up my uh, chalice and stuff like that. Just kind of doing mm-hmm. those things. Just kind of taking it chill, you know, got all season. So right, yeah, yeah. you can definitely do that with this stuff too. I've I've been taking my time leveling mine up as well. Yeah, Um, yeah, absolutely. Fun though. I need to start working on some of these pinnacle weapons. What I need to do, dude. Yeah, I'm I'm almost done with the crucible. (laughs) Oh yeah, dude. That one's apparently a sleeper. 
Yeah. Yeah, dude. That one, that one's probably, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be that or the Gambit one. Uh, I've got to start, now that I've got my sniper role I want, i got to start hunting that new hand cannon. Uh, I really want that thing. Get that, that baby Luna. Yes, basically, yeah. I forgot to mention too, dude, my exotics real quick. I've gotten like six or seven exotics in the last two weeks. Five of them. Actually, they're all old. No new exotics. Like, I'm talking old, old. Like, two or three of them were from OG uh, Destiny 2. I don't know what's going on. Using all my exotic RNG. Yeah, man. Oldies. You're wasting it. <laughs> it's insane. And it was on, two or three of them were on my Hunter, was on my Hunter. And then I jumped back over. I'm like, man, I used it all up on my Hunter probably. And then sure enough, there's two or three more oldies on my Titan. I don't know what's going on. I got yeah, Luna like Faction only... boots to drop. On a, a heroic adventure today. I think the only new exotic that I got, I think, was just Astrocyte Verse. Uh, I really want Peregrine Greaves, but I can't get that to drop yet. Eventually, eventually I'll get it. Oh, it, it, sorry, it was Lion Rampant. I don't know why I said Luna Faction. Oh so yeah, Lion those Rampant are those are helpful, man, on uh, yeah. jumping puzzles and stuff. Yeah, but think about that. That is like oldie. <laughs> <laughs> Have you gone That's all right. lately? Like... <laughs> I'll take the uh I'll take the power boost. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Zer's got some good stuff this week if you haven't picked them up. Like um uh what are the uh the uh, warlock exotic boots that give you the um ah, now I'm drawing a blank. They're really good. They give you the helpful arc stuff. You know what I'm talking about. Warlocks mm-hmm. are screaming at me right now. Pick those you're up. O- if you don't you're an uh, OG Warlock, man. Yeah, I know. You're out of the loop now. Warlock in the head, Titan in the, <laughs> in the rest. In the I won't finish that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's my reset, and it was fun, and I need to get more sleep. Moral of the story, sleep more. Get some rest, dude. Yeah, I didn't I didn't sleep much while, this week. While in it. your jacket when you yeah. get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sacrifices. But hey, uh, we got some uh, Dirt Fan feels that we're going to get to later in the show. But first, we've got a cool interview that we were able to grab impromptu uh, that I'm excited for you guys to listen to. Cool yes. community member. So cool. how about we listen up? Let's do it. <laughs> All right, I'm here with our special guest this week. Really excited to bring on the show, uh, Carolina Gamer 99. Welcome, man. Hey, what's up? Thanks for uh, thanks for having me, man. Hey, I'm really excited that you got to come on and talk with us this week, spur of the moment. Yeah, it was a bit last minute, but uh, I'm I'm happy to be here. It's it's always cool doing like podcasts and talking with fellow Destiny fans. Yeah, and it's a fun time to uh, to come on and talk about. The new content, season of opulence. (laughs) Yep, definitely is interesting so far this season. We're out here just trying to live our most opulent lives, you know? (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) Well, for those listeners who don't know a whole lot about you, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, Yeah, so my online ID is uh, CarolinaGamer99. Most call me CG just because... My name is like a mouthful to say, so anyone out no there doubt. just feels yeah, just feel free to call me CG, and uh, that's that's cool. Um, but yeah, I am an avid Destiny player. I don't really see myself as um, like a mainstream PVE or PvP. I kind of I, I enjoy both. Um, mm-hmm. I enjoy just you know just hanging out and playing and supporting my friends on Twitch mostly when I can and. You know, just having a fun time mostly. Uh, wait, wait, wait. So you play this game for fun? I play this game for I play games for fun. It's, <laughs> what a it's hard idea. to imagine. <laughs> hard to imagine. Yeah. I um I was supposed to be in college right now, but I took some time off uh the last like year and a half mm-hmm. just for personal and family reasons. But yeah, during that time I got uh I threw myself into Destiny and then 
just having a grand time with it, honestly. Yeah, it's been a fun year to play Destiny for sure. Yeah. Well, what what got you into gaming in the first place? Tell us about your background. So I originally didn't really play any video games um, until I was about 10 or 11. Um, and I moved in with my brother. And he actually had like a PlayStation 3. And I think that's right around the time when uh, Modern Warfare 1 or 2 came out. And yeah. I, I was like, oh my God, I want to like try this game out. Cause I saw like the cool cover and the, the controller and I never like, I never really got to experience any of that stuff when I was a, when I was younger. So while he was at work, I would like sneak on and try to figure out how to play and stuff. And that's nice. really how I jumped into it. Then he started like teaching me how to play and quote unquote, get better. Although in reality, he's not that good. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I definitely owe it to my brother for they kind of show me the ropes and stuff and yeah so you just went straight mostly. into fps yeah that's pretty much it like i know a lot of people are excited about like borderlands and and other like games and i know like final fantasy and all these other games that are like coming out are getting remastered or stuff like that but i personally am i'm just big into shooters that's that's my main thing yeah yeah but, i think um, that's yeah. um like what destiny does well you know or does oh, yeah. the best to me gunplay for sure feels yeah. amazing so it keeps it tight keeps it fun you know yeah never, that 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 that's one thing like that the bungee from my experience is never they never let me down with the gunplay just feels amazing yeah absolutely so how did you end up playing destiny uh i never i never like saw any like trailers or or like any of that stuff. I heard about Destiny from a friend um, uh, on the way to school one morning, actually, like on the bus. He was literally like telling me about it. He was like, you got to try this new game. It's going to be so fun. It's the people that made Halo. And I was like, I'd actually never played it. I haven't. I played like a total of 30 minutes of Halo in my entire life. Um, oh, man. But I, I knew how good Halo was. So I was like, all right, I'll check it out. So me and my brother, we uh, rented it from from Redbox like for a weekend or whatever. And I just I, I got on and I played. I made a Titan um, and I just like fell in love with it, man. We didn't like we had to pay like the late fee thing or whatever because we didn't return it back to like <laughs> later the following week. So, yeah, I, I heard about it from a friend and the rest is kind of history. I just dove right in and fell in love with the game and the community not so long after joining and playing so and was that around the time of uh, like destiny one vanilla yeah so destiny one came out i think september 2014 yeah it? yeah so i i picked it up like either late september or like early october and then uh okay. ended up like purchasing nice. the game for for playstation and i played it pretty much non-stop and yeah. I'd say over the last, what is it? Holy crap. <laughs> um, yeah, four years. Four now. or five years now, yeah. yeah. I've, I've played it daily. I mean, there's times where I went on like vacation and stuff and I haven't played it, but right. I pretty much say I sign on daily or every other day or so for sure. Definitely kept up with it. Been in love with it. And it's, I don't know. Even when it's dry, I still have fun. Yeah, I've always found some way to enjoy myself, you know? Yeah, the way I see it light. is sometimes, like, game devs or the studio or whatever, they're probably, like, trying to work on new stuff, so they it's hard to, like, keep keep up with what's going on. So I, I get it and I sympathize. So mm -hmm. what we end up, like, my friends and I end up doing is just making our own fun uh, with what we have, kind of, where we just go into the raid and do, like, a silly raid boss meme or some dumb, insane challenge that we randomly thought over you know just sometimes that's the best stuff. stuff yeah like that's fun you make definitely on yeah that's definitely a lot of fun for me doing that type of stuff for sure yeah oh cool man so you're you're a destiny veteran so you've been uh, around the block a couple so, times yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd say i'm a veteran yeah yeah your name's been your name's been around for a while um so we go from you know destiny veteran and hooked on that and uh you also 
stream on Twitch. So how did you end up broadcasting? So I never, I never knew about Twitch until I'd say a year or so after I started playing Destiny. Like I've heard about streaming and stuff, but the main thing, like up until like 2014, 2015 was like always YouTube, you know? Yeah. So I found Twitch, uh, one time after reading the, the top this week at Bungie, um, and they had, there was like a spotlight and I they haven't done one in a, in a little while, but they sometimes do these like yeah, spotlights. Yeah, they used to do the community of, spotlights, right? Yeah. Of like different yeah. people or different like artists or streamers or whatever. And they, they had a spotlight about someone named Logan Scott. He hasn't been uh, around as much recently, but back then he used to do raids on, um, on PlayStation and Xbox and he used to help people do raids. And like at the time, I think it was right around when uh taking king came out uh just after that mm-hmm. so i was i was like super into the raid it was definitely a challenge for me and i found it really like fun and awesome to help people so i was reading his spotlight and that's basically what he did and i was like dude this sounds so awesome to me i gotta check this out so they had his like twitch link or whatever so i, I pulled it up and made an account and and logged in it was just like this whole new world <laughs> that yeah. I, like, just discovered yeah so it's so interesting, that's... man. I um I found Twitch through Destiny as well. Like I I remember like reading and knowing about Justin.tv, like when it yep, was back then. like way back when. Mm-hmm. Um but somehow like missed Twitch becoming a thing until I I was so hardcore into Destiny and they were doing the reveals for House of Wolves. Yeah. And so they streamed that on twitch and they had you know broman and goth and i'm just like who are these goofballs you know yeah Uh, just got a kick out of watching them and like they were the first streamers i ever watched uh yeah found their channels and and tracked them down and uh it's like okay this is kind of cool i guess like hearing totally different take on what's going on in destiny and introduced like the idea of this community of people that played as much as i did made content about it you know just totally made it a full-blown hobby and i was like oh my gosh this is what i want you know <laughs> yeah 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 i There's definitely others like me <laughs> yeah it's like yeah you just like discovered this whole new like a new world essentially yeah it's, it's really absolutely. awesome so yeah. sorry so you went you know you found your way into twitch and then how did that develop into you creating content yeah so I, I I joined Logan um, quite a bit before he uh, took a break from streaming, um, and I would help him do raids and stuff, and it was always like a fun time just interacting with people, because he would basically pull people from his chat to play with. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I found that really interesting, really fun, and I made, I made good friends with him and a couple of his mods, and sometimes when he wouldn't stream, we would just be like, why don't we just try to help people regardless while he's offline, you know? Yeah. Um, that would, this was, this was like before I started streaming or anything. And then we started helping some people and, and a couple of our friends suggested, why don't we try streaming? Cause some people might find it interesting to watch or we could attract more people to the stream and try to reach out to more people and, you know, get them the help that they, they need or whatever. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we, we, we turned on our streams. It was me and um, I used to do Raid Helps back when Rise of Iron came out. That's when I really started doing it a bit more. Um, it was me and a guy named Raza, 582. Awesome guy. Um, yeah, we did Raid Helps with, with Wrath and, and any other raids, to be honest. But mainly, mainly Wrath when, uh, when Rise of Iron came out, which... I personally think is my favorite raid. Or, uh, it's a great raid. And it's Wrath is really raid. fun, man. Yeah. I, I loved, cause like, it was so hectic and so like chaotic for some people, but we try to keep it as simple as possible. We did that stuff. So mm-hmm. I think people always enjoyed that. And I don't know. It was, it was something different for people. So and it was an easy way to learn with us usually. Yeah. I think, you know, King's Fall was always really like technically challenging for people to learn, especially yeah, the, the heroic. Yeah. yeah. It was so punishing. Like everything had to be super tight. Yep. And, um, wrath kind of brought back the kind of the slack you needed to like have those hero moments. 
Oh, hundred percent. Something is, fell apart. Like you just you can still oh, clutch man. it. Yeah, I, re- I still remember some moments like just somebody coming through and just clutching something so tight. You know, on that last fight. Yep, yeah, Axis is. I think just thinking about it right now, um, definitely still my top uh, favorite raid encounter in, in Destiny yeah. for sure. Yeah. Fun fact, I was actually on Twitter yesterday, and one of the designers yeah. that worked on that fight was responding to this tweet, and it was like, hey, what's a, what's a weird... <clears throat> um, oh, man, I don't remember the exact question it was it was basically along the lines of like hey what's something weird that you like co-opted in a, and reused like an asset you re- reused in your game right and they uh she came in and <clears throat> pointed out that axis was a, a rebuilt spider tank <laughs> oh <laughs> really that's why three of coins wouldn't work on him because <laughs> oh, back end, wow. he technically wasn't an ultra <laughs> That actually makes a lot of sense. I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Mind blown. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, uh, I don't know if this is true, but um, somebody was talking about, do you remember when Gambit came out and uh, people were doing some kind of exploit where they could like knock the moat bank and, and like move it around and stuff? I don't know if I, I don't know if you saw that. that. This no, is when Forsaken first came out. It got p- patched pretty quickly, but the theory okay, is yeah. that the moat bank is like basically made out of like a vehicle chassis, <laughs> right? And so that's why people were able to like knock it around because it wasn't like a, a fixed object; like it's just right. kind of planted there. Anyways, Damn. I wish, weird I, game I, wish I could have seen that. That sounds hilarious. Yeah, I'm sure there's some YouTube stuff on it somewhere it was yeah it's kind of crazy what would happen um so anyways back to twitch so service streams were like a really big thing in oh, destiny yeah. one Definitely. and i don't it might just be my take but i, I feel like we don't see that as so, much in destiny 2 i i definitely know what you mean so like from my experience i've been like ever since I first got onto Twitch, I've I pretty much every time I'm playing Destiny, I essentially have Twitch like on my other monitor. So I'm always mm-hmm. watching or lurking or chatting or whatever. Um, I think a big reason for that is um, the population isn't as big and right. trials isn't a thing anymore. You know that, what I mean? That's been my suspicion. Yeah, because trials carries on the weekends. Right. Definitely put like the destiny directory like at least on twitch like up there for sure like it kept it going for quite a couple years yeah Yeah. that's definitely a big a big factor so it's not as as apparent now compared to what once was and and i know there are still like a lot of streamers still doing like oh raid help and sherpa and stuff but it still isn't as wide as it once was and uh it's just something i've noticed like but i think in the end like people started building more communities because of that yeah and because you wouldn't it wouldn't just be as simple as you know getting into somebody's queue and going and getting sure better carried through a raid right <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, it's not as as easy anymore i guess yeah people have definitely built communities and friendships and stuff over that stuff mm-hmm. um i'd say there's definitely a smaller group of like Sherpas out there now, at least on Twitch. But the yeah. ones that I've seen and the ones that I know that I'm friends with, like like James Work and JXXR Clyde and those guys, they're they're all really really cool Sherpas and they they do a great job and yeah, they they're super dedicated. Like I personally, I I used to do that, like I said, but after a while, I just got to the point where I felt burnt out on doing that, and mm-hmm. I found that I was having more fun. And I started like doing like other challenges and speed runs and stuff like that. I'm not saying I didn't have fun helping people. Like I still do. Like up until like a couple hours ago, I was helping some friends with the new raid. Oh, but, nice. Um, the most enjoyment for me, for uh, when it comes to when it comes to Destiny, is definitely pushing myself to like to the limits and uh, just doing goofy stuff sometimes in game with my friends. Is that the typical kind of content folks can expect if they uh, hop into your stream? Yes. Yeah, so 
yeah, times have definitely changed when it comes to my stream. <laughs> um, <laughs> no more raid helps. Nothing against it, but it's just not for me, honestly. Mm -hmm. I have more fun when I'm streaming if I'm doing something challenging or just really dumb. Like, so usually on stream, I'm doing like a challenge or a speed runner or something meme -y. Um, and I either, <laughs> I post like any meme clips. So like we do like really dumb boss kills. Like, uh, what's a really dumb one that we did recently? I guess a big one is when we killed, uh, Argos with, with swords, like only swords. Oh, we I saw that, with man. Swords. That was, I was yeah. telling my friends about it when I saw it. My yeah. buddies who we all ran Argos together and they said, wait, no, they didn't. How? I was just yeah. like, look at the clip, man. This is possible. <laughs> yeah. So like we, like we put in like so much time and stuff into that. Um, all, all for probably like a 30 second to like a minute clip, but just doing like when we finally get like that moment when you see like the health bar just disappear yeah. or the boss just drop dead or whatever. It's just. Like that's super super fun to me, and it's, that really cracked me up big time. Yeah, th it's it's hilarious. Like I think Argos is maybe my favorite boss of Destiny Two. Maybe like if not favorite, maybe like a close close tie with another. What is the other? If you don't mind me asking, <sighs> probably Callus. Gotcha. Okay. Just just because he's so weird. Yeah, like not Kallus not is... the encounter itself. Just because it's so freaking weird. <laughs> yeah. Chaos is definitely interesting. We've yeah. we've done some. He is like the meme, like oh yeah, God, yeah. Everything's been done to him. Like anytime a new gun comes out, yeah, it's so always waiting, gotta like, gotta go test it on Chaos. Gotta go gotta test it on Chaos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See what it does on Chaos for sure. Yeah, but uh, it's yeah, it's funny. Um, like I, I think the interesting thing that they did in D two compared to D one was as opposed to making the um like the 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 enemy like the big bad right for each expansion or yeah. story like as opposed to it being like a just ultra evil like bad character like they're almost kind of all in the neutral territory to an extent like some of them not like yeah. the uh the raid layers but like the main central bad guys they're right. all kind of like in the middle somewhere even though you're pitted against them and i think that that's cool because like none of they're they're not all defeated. Like we're still hanging out with Callus, the Drifters, kind of a yeah, bad guy. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's kind of cool. Even Riven, kind of like a chaotic neutral, oh, you know. Yeah. Like could could have gone either way. <laughs> yeah. Like even with Callus, where we technically didn't kill him. Yeah, I mean, still like he's, he's putting out what he looks like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like. Just a robot. So, what? What? What is Callus, and is he? Is he technically still bad? Or I have what? some theories about yeah. what he is, but spin foil hat, you know. <laughs> yeah, we got to wait and find out. I guess we'll find out eventually. I suppose. I think they're. Whole, I think they want to keep him around for a while. Like, and, and what? That's kind of what I like is they're kind of building the stable of. Um of these other like neutral party characters right you know, that they can kind of all throw together into the story and it gets more complicated and more interesting. Right. Yeah. And they're all kind of pitted against each other too. Like Callus and uh Sabathun and uh, like the drifter against everybody and Mara against Sabathun. Like there's this kind of tangled web being weaved. It's interesting. Yeah. I, I honestly, I don't know. It's always been like in the back of my mind. I've always had a feeling that somehow we're going to turn against the Vanguard or something like that. And I'm worried about it. Inside <laughs> with the villains. The people that we're supposed to be fighting against and taking out is they're going to yeah. be our new allies. And yeah, I don't know. I just like that. Something like that, like a situation like that's always been in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. But um, obviously it's all speculation and no one really knows. Yeah. I think yeah. they're definitely setting up a lot of gray area to play with, you know. Yeah, definitely. Looking but that should to make future. for an interesting story. Oh, definitely will. Well, let's talk that. about the most topical thing this week, which is Crown of Sorrows and all yeah. the fun we've had over the past week or so, right? Definitely. 
So yes. first notable thing we have to discuss was uh, your triumphant world's first <laughs> run. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That's got to still you. feel amazing. Yeah, it's still, uh, it's still a bit surreal, man. Like <clears throat> once we finally downed the boss and everything and got the raid done and we saw the exotic pop up and it was just like, we like freaked out just because <laughs> we've been so close. Like, like shout out to my, to my clan mates and my teammates, man. They all did a great job on the raid and they, they, they performed very well. Yeah. And we've like several of us, we essentially have the same team that we've been running with for like the last few blind raids. Mm -hmm. Um, who came second, third, or like, uh, like last wish was a different story because last wish was super long. And yeah, no but, um, yeah, we've either gotten top 10 or top 15 finishes and we've either had situations where we get to the boss first or we get past the second last encounter and then we waste time getting to the boss like mm -hmm. just random little things like basically our own mistakes you know and uh yeah. it felt it felt great to finally like get that hell yeah we did it feeling yeah yeah it's a uh, doing trying to do those raids and i've only actually attempted like one real world's first tip and that was um with leviathan proper and right. um, we were doing really, really well, and we got hung up on dogs for five hours. <laughs> so, yeah, like, I think we were yeah, competing. Dogs was a big part. Yeah, until we that got was a big dogs. issue. Yeah. So it's, you know, you can do great on three quarters of it and then just run into a snag and it totally just shoots you in the foot. So, like, yeah, the ability can... for you guys to, like, plow through that whole thing and yeah. it's impressive. Yeah. I like I said, man. The the team consisted of just like solid players for sure. Like, mm -hmm. um, and we all really work together pretty well. Like, no one really like overpowers the other person or tries to talk over someone else. We all have different suggestions and are all like super vigilant and you know just like it's just a good team. Like chemistry going on with, with with that team and i i love i love all those guys so much and i always yeah. enjoy playing with them and hanging out with them and really really proud of us super proud yeah it takes a team to get there man yeah for sure definitely like all these people say congratulations to me on twitter or whatever man i i always try to remind people to say congrats to the entire team because it was a yeah. team effort for sure Definitely yeah, well, was. shout out to those guys if they uh, happen to listen, man. Really impressed by the whole team. You guys knocked it out for sure. Yeah. Um, I just, you, you know, this, at, like, rating is my central, like, love and destiny. So, yeah. I'm trying to give y'all the esteem you deserve because I, you know, I know what it takes. I have, well, I know some of what it takes because I haven't done it myself. <laughs> but I know how hard it is, man. It's just, yeah. Definitely. It's got to be, like, a really tight team and, just everything's got to come together. Um, yep. So what do you think about this? Like, where do you, let's, let's start easy. Where do you place this raid in destiny two raids? In destiny two raids. I would say as a whole, uh, I'd say it's probably, uh, like I, I love Last Wish and it's really awesome. So I'd say it's probably second place for me behind nice. Last Wish. Right behind Last Wish. Yeah. I'd say Last Wish is, a, second is place. a pretty awesome raid. Not gonna lie. As yeah, as a whole raid, yeah. But yeah. The, the 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 boss encounters are different. I have I I love the the Gal Run boss encounter for sure. But as a whole, I'd say it's a second second place for me. Nice. So yeah. I know you, the reason, um, we came together, you brought this up on Twitter and you were asking what people thought about some of the encounters. And so I'm eager to hear what you think about some of the encounters, especially, um, like the, uh, the third and fourth, like, you know, the kind of the, the central tenet of the raid, like the, the deception and then actually defeating Galron. Um, because I, I find, you know, it's, it, it reminds me personally a lot of King's Fall in some ways. Yeah. yeah, I can definitely see that. I think they kind of were touching on some of those like design tenants. So 
give us give us your uh, your essay, man. Give us your spiel. What do you think? Yeah, so I think overall the whole raid um, mechanically it's not too challenging. I think day one having the uh, the modifier on mm-hmm. um, was it could be a challenge for some people. For me, like it definitely added a challenge. So I I, I like I, I like that. Um, but encounter by encounter, I'd say, um, the first encounter is probably a little slow just because you have to do it four times over. Yeah. I agree Um, with that. Yeah. So we realized we're like, surely you don't have to do this four times. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah. We saw there's four we, like we, yeah, we saw the (laughs) lamps. We heard the the noise and and looked over and saw the, the flames. Like, oh, okay, so we got to do this four times. Yeah. Like, as we were doing it, it, it seemed fast, but after uh, running the raid back again, my, my second time through and however many times now I've done it, uh, it definitely does get a bit old there. So, but um, overall, that encounter is really cool. And obviously, just like other raids, it, like, it builds up as you progress and combines, like, each, like, mechanic pretty much at the at, at the boss fight so it's right. definitely a good introduction right there super super simple introduction and it's relatively yeah it teaches easy to you understand. like the basic yeah here's how you handle the crystals here's how you handle the buff right yeah i guess i guess i could justify why they might have done it four times is to make sure that people got it. it yeah make sure that people got used to how how, how everything works with that yeah so that I, I, I guess i could see how how the four round thing works. Um, what do you think about that jumping puzzle? Honestly, it is so dicey. simple. It's it's <laughs> cool. It's visually it's just like when you first walk in after you drop down and mm-hmm. you look, uh, you just look up. You can kind of see like where you have to go and like, oh right. my god, how the hell are we gonna get there? Yeah. But um, I think I think it's a cool it's a cool encounter. I was actually talking about about that specific part earlier with, with some friends when we we're doing the raid and i was just thinking to myself how awesome would it be if like the plates themselves started like bouncing up and down um, oh my god kind of like how the plates do in, in like the gauntlet in, encounter yeah yeah and then like if there were like some snipers or some ads just like shooting at us the whole time mm. that would that would make that so much more like crazy which i personally would love like i love hectic chaotic encounters like that yeah but um, uh, yeah right now how it like... is it's, it's pretty cool the problem that I have with that encounter is there's not enough to do. Yeah. Like so for the whole team, you know, yeah, like that's two, exactly what like I was two, thinking. three people can do it. Yep. Or that's exactly probably, what happened. You know, my second run through, I was, I was doing something and, um, I had to go AFK. And when we got to that part, I was like, yo, I'll be right back. And I came back and they're like already done. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, Oh, well you guys didn't need me. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I do kind of like how it um is they kind of pulled like the that's the, the same section in Eater Worlds that has like the disappearing mm-hmm. like rising yeah. platforms like okay this is familiar like we recognize that right just yeah how do you go okay and then you just you're dealing with the buff from the uh, crystals and all that stuff yeah so I think that part is obviously like another uh, introduction into how. Mm-hmm. things are going to work later on for sure so it's it's a good introduction along with the the first area um definitely could include the use of more teammates but uh overall it's cool i like yeah. it visually it's amazing I, I yeah it looks beautiful room. as all things do in destiny yep. raids right <laughs> yeah they never seen an ugly raid there. encounter so when we get into the deception Let's talk yeah. about that encounter. So I'll be honest, the first the first times so our our blind run, um, it took it didn't take us too long. Well, it didn't take my teammates too long to figure out how we wanted to beat the fight. Mm-hmm. I understood like the basics of the mechanics for that fight, but I just I could not get it in my head for some reason that we needed to like switch uh, on the first room with only the three people. And then on, on the second switch, we needed to have, like, five people. I just, like, couldn't get it in my head for some reason. It took me, like, two or three raids back, running it back, just to, like, fully understand. Yeah. Um, I think the encounter's cool, though. 
having a roaming like a roaming boss like that during during an encounter is, is is fun like i've always i've always wanted to have like the boss moving around with us you know like doing stuff trying to attack right. us while we're trying to take out ads or do a mechanic or stuff like that like, it definitely makes it tricky if you've got that guy on your section yeah. like, adds, oh God, it adds go. some yeah some challenge there i personally it's, love it totally bouncing around like never don't it's it's like floor is lava time like just don't yeah, stand definitely anywhere, definitely on those back to the back sides uh definitely always on top of those pillars there for sure always chilling on those um i think doing damage to the bosses is a really cool concept it's a it's definitely a different um i think i think overall it's a cool encounter uh the only thing i'd say that needs changing or fixing is the little glitch uh where it carries over from that part into phase two where the vessels don't spawn but i i like the encounter a lot it's really awesome and um speaking about it Shout out to Giggs and Vendetta for two manning that part uh, earlier today. They came up with this insane strategy of shooting a uh, colony across and over, like over the walls that come up, and somehow exploding the colony shots onto the vessel and trading the buff. So shout out to those two for two manning that part. Definitely looking forward to trying that myself. Yeah, that was way outside of the box so to speak yeah and seeing strategy for sure yeah i can uh it's it's always crazy how fast the community kind of hits those encounters and see all right how fast can we three man two man one man <laughs> like, yeah they'd find a way some that's way or another definitely, they, that's the highlight for me for whenever new raids come out is definitely trying to like either speed run or do little man's on it or, or break stuff it like that yeah it's definitely a fun a fun time like i, lo I lose sleep over it but it's it's worth it for yeah sure. absolutely well it's destiny yeah i think it's um a cool thing i like about the raid is how it kind of teaches you you don't have to do it this way but it teaches you just the buddy system like you you spend oh, a whole yeah. raid buddied up with somebody yeah. And even in the deception encounter, you know, it forces you to get into three teams of two. So yep. this leads into the next encounter where there's there's this. It's <laughs> reminds me of King's Fall. Like there's two different strats. Yeah. Do you run this stacked or whatever strat, or do you run the you know, the three two strat? What what is your preference? So I've seen a few teams just from browsing on Twitch and and stuff that do like the whole stack up in the middle with a well or something. Yeah. Um I definitely think that is maybe a good option if people are like severely underleveled. So just okay. like having people underleveled and then team shooting ads will, will that definitely makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. But if you're at level or even like even if you're not within the, the same delta of the ads or whatever. Um, but you have like two, two players that are communicating and stuff. They should comfortably be able to, 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 to handle their side. Um, in, in reality, there is not a lot of ads that spawn during, during the fight like that. Yeah. So as I long find, as the two people are paying attention, you should be fine. I think that's the best strat for sure. I find two. it's more difficult if you're not taking down the ads as they spawn because mm -hmm. they can quickly get out of control in like one area or the other. Yeah. And then all of a sudden there's like, you know, three then wizards, and of two knights yeah. at your six all of a sudden that, cause nobody was necessarily in charge of them. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's kind of my yeah. complaint with why that, like we tried that initially and like within the first 30 minutes we, we changed very quickly yeah <laughs> yeah i personally have never like i haven't tried that at all i've just i've just seen other people do it and i was like in my head i was like uh i guess this could work potentially i was like trying i was trying to justify obviously people run raids differently right like everyone does things yeah. differently mm -hmm. and in my opinion it's like what do i get the job done but sometimes it's more about 
leaning towards like efficiency like what actually does the best job you know so i i, I think doing three teams of two is is the better option uh for, for the boss fight for sure i'm kind of more stubborn about raids like i i think there's a right way <laughs> there, even if even if people don't agree and i'm not saying like there's anything wrong with doing it a different way but yeah. I, let me rephrase i think that there is a way that the developers intended oh most and definitely usually that yeah, makes yeah. the most sense because it's been played and tested that way right yep but there's always weird spin-offs that you can see if well i do this because of that and yeah, it's all good. But. Yeah, like certain groups are just always like, oh, we did this when we first did the raid, so let's just keep it going. Like I've definitely oh, yeah. seen yeah. tons of people do that. There's definitely and, like uh like doing uh gauntlet heroic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's one of the things where there's like five different ways that I've seen it done and I've Yep. And every <laughs> every time I would get somebody different on my team they're like but no we have to do it this way and i learn a different way and at this point i just don't care (laughs) yeah i think like i said i shoot right whatever gets the job done yeah 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 um so what are your thoughts on that final encounter i honestly love it it is uh like i mentioned earlier in the show it's I, i love axis and that's my favorite boss fight Mm-hmm. But this is this is some like right now. Just thinking about it and playing, I spent like easily thirty hours in that fight, like specifically so far since it's been out. Um, it's rivaling Axis for me. The only thing that could overthrow Axis uh, is if there's a strat that that comes out where I can somehow solo this boss fight. Oh man, and two man we me and uh me and my claymate Golden. Shout out to Golden. Uh, we ended up getting a team man the other day and I have to say that was so much fun, man. Wow. Like, it's just, it's so hectic and it's, it's so much stuff going on. Like you have the boss shooting at you. You have to take care of the knights and all the, the regular as that are spawning. Mm-hmm. And once the ogre is spawned, you have them like mapping you from across the entire planet and you just have to stay on top of your crystal so you don't end up wiping. It's just, it's, it's so hectic and chaotic. There's a lot and to do I for love two people, man. I love that fight. Yeah, I love that fight specifically with two people. It's so fun. So I think the encounter mechanically is is definitely it's easy to get the hang of, uh, in my opinion. I think um, as long as you have two people that understand the fight and if they're on the same team or on the same side together, they can easily do it without talking at all. Like I I did a couple of LFG raids and I. I usually, when I go on LFG, it's usually to just get stuff done. Um, so yeah. I don't really talk as much unless people like really nag me to talk. I just, I just type in the chat usually if, if they, if I have to call something out uh, real fast, like empowered or empowered left. Uh, I have like crystal on, on second encounter and last wish or something like that or whatever. I just like type in the chat and only really talk unless it's necessary. So yeah, I think this fight is, is cool for that. So if you just have people that understand it, um, and they can explain it if needed. I'd say it's it's a really fun raid. People can learn it relatively easily. Yeah, the it's main funny, issue would be um, just not being on a level, and that's about it. We were trying to get my team is comprised of like different. I'd say the best way to put it: different age groups, like right younger guys, and then some older guys. So like we all work different types of jobs, have different schedules across three different time zones, right? So. Yeah. Our our difficulty last week was trying to get everybody on at the same time mm-hmm. and having enough time to like spend on learning everything. And we were right. blind rating everything up until when was it? Sunday night was the last Sunday. night everybody could actually spend time on. And we got such a late start. We were like, all right, if we're actually going to finish this tonight, Let's just look up a working strat so that everybody can get clear. So we went that route and, um, but some of the guys were just so tired, like they didn't finish. So several of them dropped off and then a couple of them hung around for a while and then they dropped off. So we, Uh. we just kept infusing with LFG players. And by the end, two of my team were on and the other four were all LFG. But by this time, Everybody still playing had learned the fight so well 
that like right. the last team we put together, we got it done on like our second, third shot and wow. everybody was switching <laughs> roles and changing around as people came in, you know, and we were like, well, I, yeah. I played over here, so I'm going to do this and I'll swap with you. And, but it all just went fine. Cause everybody knew the ad spawns, like yeah. the rotations, like what happens. And it just, it's like you're saying, it's one of those raids where if you can learn one role, like you can transfer that role to anything because the yeah, pattern that happens, it changes every, every time, you know? Yep. And I think that's cool because you're not, that's, that's kind of the weakness with, with some raids, like you learn maybe one sometimes one specific thing yeah, and you, then, then you never get out of your comfort zone. Like kind of like Crota, like some people just never learn to run sword. You know, it's yep. just like one guy, it's like, he's the sword guy, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. I definitely know what you mean. In this encounter, like everyone is doing the same thing and you can, yep. you can go anywhere and, and jump in and do it wherever you are, you know? Yeah. That definitely just, that adds to, I think that'll just add to like the amount of people that enjoy it. Cause you know, yeah. that just adds to just people being able to help more people, like being comfortable right. about it and confident about it. So. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think I think that's a good idea that they that they did that for sure. Yeah, I like that. And I mean, that's not like I don't know if that was the intention, but that's not an easy thing to design. Yeah, like to design a complicated not. encounter that also allows everyone to learn a role that can fit in anywhere. Like that's it's kind of a tall yeah. order, right? <laughs> I think speaking of like uh, talking about relics and stuff, I I believe they they mentioned they're trying to stray away from having that like one designated like person that has to like you know that's the most important where they have to take a relic and they have to do this or that to the boss or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think they're definitely gonna try to, from my understanding, expand on on mechanics and and roles and stuff like that, uh, similar to to Galran for sure. Yeah, so I'm the cool thing with Galron is like, even though you're not dealing with a relic and stuff, you can still like jump in and have a hero moment. Oh yeah, if like, somebody for, else like if something's going wrong, somebody dies, yeah. you got to res somebody. Oh, we don't have a buff. Okay, I'll get the crystal. You get him up. You know? Yep, yep, right. When the like, even in the two man, like so many runs where we had it, where we thought we we're gonna wipe because a crystal exploded and. Yeah, you actually have a, a decent amount of time. It's kind of like, um, like the the blessing, the blessing buff. You know how it goes down to zero, and then you have like extra time with the witch's debuff. I've noticed that, yeah, because you yeah. you, you start to go red. Time. Yeah, same thing with the crystal. It goes a little. It goes. It starts off purple. It goes green as it's like decaying or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you have a couple seconds after to to still like get it. So yeah, it gives you a little they're time. Very lenient there. They're a little so, forgiving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah glad Thankfully. glad they did that for sure yeah yeah it helps um so it sounds like you really have enjoyed the heck out of this raid i'm glad to hear it i uh i think definitely it was have. we were definitely due for a really strong raid you know after uh last season not having any new raid yeah. material and um i know I'm, that you enjoyed last wish a lot uh what did yeah. you think of wrath or not wrath, sorry. I keep calling Scourge wrath. What do you uh, think of Scourge? <laughs> yeah, I I, li I like Scourge. Um, it's definitely like going back to what we talked about. Like Bungie never fails like visually. Like visually, that that raid and the the final boss fight is super awesome. Mm -hmm. It seems like a movie. Like I'm like I'm in a movie on that boss fight. So they did a good job there. Uh, Lengthwise, it's not as long because if they were to take out the spare part, it'd basically be a raid layer, essentially. So, yeah. yeah. And I know, I know it's hard. Like I, I always try to, I not always. I try my best to see things from the other person's point of view. So in this situation, I try to see it from like the dev's point of view. They have all this, all this, uh, all this stuff and these expectations that people have of them to make raids and to, to put out good encounters and good boss fights and stuff. And it's, it's hard, like trying to come up with like new, new ideas, you know? And I, I think they, yeah. they always do a good job of that. So I think scourge, especially, especially, uh, the prime boss fight is really awesome. I think they did a great job. I, I love the boss fights. It's, I mean, it's yeah, finding dope. a walking tank 
besides the annoyance of of its AI, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, the spectacle and everything of it is amazing to me, and I I, I think it's so cool um, that it's set in the last city. Yeah, like that setting is so unique and like somewhere I've oh, wanted to go. Definitely. You know? Yeah, the, yeah, that's the first. I think that's the first time I've ever been like down because you, you're so used to just like looking up at the tower and and staring out and not really knowing like what's really happening down there. Yeah, and yeah, this is the first time we're going into the city like that, and it's like the first thing. The first encounter is just a huge open area, and it looks really awesome. Um, when they did the raid along, it was it was super cool to see like all their concept art and all that stuff for it. So mm-hmm. I, I think. Yeah, visually and 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 gameplay wise, they did a great job. I I, I like the raid a lot. Yeah, I I don't I I don't really think I see any of the raid content they've put out. Like, I don't think I've seen anything I just hate or anything that yeah. I see as a failure. Like, I think they each have their own success in ways, and it's like different flavors. Like some right. raids, certain people love more than others. You know? Um, yeah. You- for just for different reasons. Yeah, you can't please everyone. You can only no. try to just please the masses, but you definitely can't please Yeah, everyone. and then you're also talking about, like, there's such a small subset of the community that actually play all this stuff, too. Oh, yeah, so definitely. So then you're really, like, picking apart, like, <laughs> out of a small section of people, like, what all those people like, you know? Mm-hmm, and it's, I think it's a tough thing because you want to please that section of the community, but also try to bring more raiders in, you know? Right. Right. I think that that is, I think my only disagreement in destiny two is like the, the way they veered with last wish, like difficulty wise and mechanically, like, I think it's a triumph in design. Yeah. You know, but, so it, like I see it as a love letter to the people that just love the grittiest, hardest stuff they could come up with, you know? Yeah, that's like doing that raid. We spent 23 hours in there. Wow. 23 hours. And I was I was honestly ready to keep going. <laughs> I was committed to, to like st- like staying up. And even though we're probably going to miss the, uh, the 24 hour mm-hmm. uh, emblem, I was down to keep going. But my uh, several, I think two or three of my teammates, they had all been up even before the raid launched. They were up. Uh, yeah, it's not like plus you, hours yeah. trying to grind. It's not so, like you yeah. had just been awake for twenty four hours. Like yeah, we were up before then. For probably sure. a whole another eighteen hours on top of that, right? So yeah, they were they were pretty much just dead. <laughs> yeah, it was it was brutal for them. And just like you mentioned earlier with time zones, my clan. And my team specifically, like that team, I think we had members playing in Australia, in uh, in Austria, in like all time zones of America. Wow. So it was it was a widespread thing. That's all yeah. over. Yeah. So it was uh, it was definitely brutal. But yeah, like you said, challenging wise, last wish I nailed it, and it's not really for everyone. But I I personally like it a lot and. It can be rough, but I, I, I love a challenge, man. I, I love a challenge. Sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, because we're almost out of time, I want to hit you with the derp lightning round before we wrap up. So these are just quick fire questions. Just give me the best yep. uh, answer you got, okay? So what's yep. your favorite class in Destiny 2? Uh, honestly, going into Destiny 2, I'd say it was Titan. But recently, I've been playing so much Warlock. I'll, I'll play whatever, but if I had to pick right now in this moment, I'd probably say Warlock. A lot of people converting to Warlock lately. Yeah, they're just, they they seem too they're too strong. They can they have like a good mix of everything. So yeah, they're versatile. Yeah. All right. What is your favorite weapon right now? Favorite weapon. Uh, I honestly have to say I have to say Mountaintop. <laughs> oh man. I have to say Mount Top, like Everybody especially was themselves that I, didn't finish that <laughs> that quest right now. Uh it is it's such a good weapon. I fortunately did it. Um I did it when I first came out, like the quest 
when it was first released um, on mm-hmm. heavy ammo before they made the heavy ammo changes to comp. So it wasn't too bad. So I just got it when I was grinding my way to uh, to legend that season. But yeah, I'm super happy I got mountain top uh, basically for this raid, even though I didn't know it. <laughs> right yeah it, it's so good man it's so good for the boss it's so good for for the knights and the ogres and all that stuff so yeah definitely have to say it's that. funny with uh with weapons and destiny you just really never know what's yeah. gonna be the weapon to have like recluse yeah. man like i yeah, everyone I, was so like skeptical about it i was skeptical oh, about it both it's both so weapons. good though <laughs> yeah it's so good it's good in both like pv it's good and in everything PvP. yeah yeah, it's a solid weapon for sure. I don't take that gun off. Like, it's so much fun. And I don't even care if, you yeah, know, it's a great I, I get bad messages about it. I'm like, whatever, man, I'm having fun. This is great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, what is your favorite Destiny character? Uh, I'd probably have to say Zavala, just because. I'm still, even though I said favorite class is Warlock, I'm still a Titan. Titan on the inside, huh? Yeah, I'm still a Titan at heart. Okay. I know a lot of people hate on Zavala, but he's still my man. So you, you had to pledge Vanguard for the Allegiance quest, right? I definitely did. Okay. <laughs> Everyone else pledged, uh, pledged with the Drifter, but I was, I was all, I was all Vanguard for sure. Fair enough. Yeah. What, uh, what other game do you enjoy playing besides Destiny right now? Right now, there's, there's nothing else at the moment um you're one one girl kind of guy yeah i'm a, I'm a one trick pony for now <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i'm looking forward to potentially picking up the new call of duty but oh that's yeah later down yeah it's later down the line right now it's just just destiny for me yeah there's a lot to play come the fall man it's a yeah. really stacked year this year i think uh what is your favorite chips my favorite chips um i'd have to say sour cream and onion Nice. Any particular sour brand? Cream. Uh, Lay's usually. Lay's sour cream and onion. <laughs> yeah, pretty those simple. They're pretty good to me. My kid loves those, man. We I get hey. big bags and they just disappear in a day. <laughs> yeah, me and your kid would get along. <laughs> yeah. All right, and then the most important question of the evening: Does pineapple belong on pizza? Uh, that's a tough one. <laughs> you gotta give honestly. Yes or no, man. I would say no. Okay. Now. now. If say if I was like in a dire situation and that was the only thing that I like could eat, uh, yeah, I would but that's eat not it. what we're talking about. All right, but yeah, I yeah, honestly food, say it does not. <laughs> I I say it does not belong on pizza. Pineapple is its own thing. Good man, you're welcome back anytime. <laughs> thanks. All right, CG man, thanks a lot for uh, coming to join us this week. It was really good to hear about your experiences and uh, what you think about the raid. Uh, yeah, definitely have to have you back next, uh, maybe this fall after the new raid. Hey, I am all for it, man. It was it was awesome being on for sure. Sounds Looking good. I look forward, forward to, to uh, Keep. seeing you get that belt at Guardian Con, man. You and your yeah, team. Yeah, the big show. The big show's going to be there. Yeah. So it should be, should be interesting. What a moment. Who did, yeah, everyone's who knew, everyone, right? like joking around and saying, I'm going to get like choke slammed or something. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely, yeah. I mean, it, you'll be. Uh, you'll you it'll be a big mistake if you don't take advantage of a photo op with that man afterwards and be like dude yeah like put me in in a hold or something and let's get a picture you know yeah 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 definitely will cool, man definitely will take some pics for sure all right well thanks for coming on again uh if you can tell everybody where they can find you uh social twitch everything yeah so um you can find me on twitch on twitter and youtube at carolina gamer 99 there you go go give this man a follow on twitter go check out his content on twitch and youtube he's got a lot of great fun stuff like like you said breaking the game doing the ridiculous things in destiny always fun to enjoy uh if you didn't see one of my recent favorites uh was uh you going in and and sword killing argos that was that was a particularly funny one to me so yeah y'all go check that out all right man thanks a lot thank you man it was definitely fun being on here
right, man. Well, that was cool. Uh, great to have Carolina Gamer on. You uh, had an excellent interview to fit in your raid chat, I think, Cyborg. I think you enjoyed it. Yes. You know yeah. I do. Yeah. Until one day when I start raiding again, you'll have a, a buddy on the show to talk about. Yeah, so raiding. you cross save done. You come do toast, <laughs> dude. You're done. But no, yeah, dude. Be hunting you uh, down tonight. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're doing it, this raid. Come on. Uh, yeah, you're going to drag me in. I know you are. <laughs> until then, it was awesome to have this guardian on. To uh, Yeah, I mean, congratulations to, again to him and his team for uh, what they Definitely. achieved. Definitely. Definitely. Proud accomplishment for those guys. Got to give them props. Um, all right, man. You ready for Dirt Fam Feels? Not Dirt Fam Feels. Dirt Fam Discourse. Week. Yeah, yes. that was last week. <laughs> We're back to Dirt Fam Discourse, <laughs> episode 201. We'll see maybe at about 300. Anyways, <laughs> yes, we got just kind of a quick shout out. Uh, Arkham Knight 891. I feel like this Guardian's left us a review before, but sent yep. us a nice email. Said their new listener enjoyed the show. And uh, we just wanted to say, got it, appreciate it. Thanks for the kind words. Thanks for tuning in. It means a lot to us. Um, yes, it does. Yes, always. Uh, but we've got some other emails we're going to bank and hold for the next few episodes because this episode's already going extremely bank long. So discourse, Guardian. Yes. We won't. There's not, I don't think we have one we're going to bank for like 70 episodes like we did Wilberfish. But man, <laughs> what, what good timing on that one. Uh, yeah. We got your email too, buddy. Thank you. Uh, anyways, we got some speak pipes as well. Um, we got two speak pipes, uh, one from Dreadnought78, long time DRP listener and Dirt Fam member. Um, why don't we take a listen to that, Cyborg? Let's do it. What's up, Dirt Fam? This is Dreadnought78. I wanted to call in and congratulate Arrow and Cyborg on 200 episodes. That's an amazing accomplishment. You guys should be so proud i mean i'm proud to call myself an og listener i've been listening since episode three and i look forward to what you guys do with uh 200 or 400 more episodes i mean it's been great and uh you guys are great people but i also wanted to comment on arrow's challenge to call in and say why you play destiny and the reason i played destiny is because i've been a big fan of bungie since halo I played the beta on uh, original Destiny 1 and fell in love with it. And I just think it's it's a lot of fun, especially when you uh, team up with people that uh, have the same passion as you and especially those people who know more about the game than I do. I've always loved learning the different things that people have uh, figured out and uh, love that we share that information with everyone. Um, I like to think of Destiny as an on-again, off-again relationship where three months is great and then you break up and then two months later you you meet back up and then you're back on. So I am back on the Destiny relationship. I've been loving Season of Opulence and looking forward to Shadow Keep and looking forward to uh, playing with people with cross saves. So uh, thanks guys so much for what you do. Keep it up and uh, you stay classy out there, Dirt fam. Dreadnought, thanks for the uh, speak pipe, man. We appreciate you being a part of the community. We appreciate the the kudos there. And uh, yeah, Dirt Fam, man. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much. We, we're glad you uh, answered us on why you uh, play Destiny. Uh, the on and off again relationship is yeah. very interesting. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people get it. through that, though. With yeah, definitely. Always live games like this, you know. Yep. That's, I mean, it's kind of glad the back, beast, though. right? Welcome Yes. Back. And uh, we will try to stay classy. Guardian. Uh, if you say so. He always exits on that. I love it. <laughs> stay, stay classy, San Diego. Um, now we got another long dude uh, speak pipe from long-term Dirt Fan member Davis. You know this guy, right? I mean, you play with him uh, sometimes. Yes. You could uh, say that. Yes. I'll just leave it at yes. <laughs> Hashtag Ben Davis. Let's take a listen. What's up, guys? It's your boy. Re Wait, this ain't YouTube. This does need to be 10 minutes, right? What's up, guys? It's Davis. Hey, I'm just answering the call from Terry's GM Speak Pipe Challenge. Um, let's not have this wait another 18 months, shall we? So uh, before I get to who I'm going to pick, um, I want to thank Arrow, Cyborg, the admin team, and the fam. You know, it's been a great four years. 
and going. Um, just had 200 episodes, amazing episodes. Um, here's to 200 more. I like to challenge Dark Huntress, who's also in the Dirt family, um, to respond. All right. Take care, guys. Later. Davis, buddy. Awesome to have a speak pipe from you again. Loved the uh, the uh, YouTube voice. Uh, that was excellent. Please don't do that again. No, you had it in you, but stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but we for real, we appreciate it. You, you've been a part of the team for a long time. Been a part of my fire team for a long time. All the way back to the Bubble Titan comeback from 4-1 to one in trials on Black Shield. Seems nice. like forever ago. Anyways, we appreciate you leaving a speak pipe. Of course, we know Terry challenged you. Um, but uh, thanks for all the kind words, dude, and doing your part for the Dirt fam. Yeah, the challenge was answered. It was. And uh, Dark Huntress. Huntress. You're up. Boom. It's back. You're it's listening. live. Yeah, Just the worst part the about challenge. these is uh, hoping that the people are listening this week. Right, yeah. I mean, we find out real quick. <laughs> you you know? got to tag them. We Somebody tag tells them, like, hey, yeah. I think, yeah. wasn't it, was it your buddy, your buddy, I know in your fire team, our buddy, Darth, didn't he call, it was like free phrase to a smooch pipe challenge at one point too. Oh, smooch now, pipe, oh my way lord. Way back. Now you're bringing way it back. back. Yeah. Anyways, yep. thank you guys for the speak pipes, we love it. Yep, thank you. So if you're listening, um, if you'd like to send us some discourse, maybe it's something we talked about on the show this week and you want to let us know what you think. Maybe you've got a question for us, a discussion question. Maybe you just want to give a shout out to somebody awesome in the community. You can do that by emailing us, destinyresetpodcast at gmail.com or sending us a speak pipe, speakpipe.com slash destiny reset. There you have it. There you have it. Hey, uh, do we have any new patrons this week, air night? Hey, cyborg, we do. Oh, man. Shout out to Dropkick. Old school, third fan hey, right there. Dropkick, thanks. Yep, worthy D. Thank you so much. Thank and you, thank you. Dreadnought seventy eight. Thank you guys Man. so much. We really appreciate it. What is a bunch um, of support this week, huh? Yeah, a lot of support, dude. Uh, means a lot to us. We did want to say, you know, a good question came up in our uh, uh, Patreon patron supporter channel. If you ever have been a supporter, a patron. Uh, supporter or a uh, PayPal supporter, if you will. You'll always be on our website as long as it's up and you'll always have access to the channel. It doesn't go away. We we just That's appreciate right. it. Once, uh, once this title, always. So just so you know, if you don't have access to the channel on Discord or something, message us. We will make sure you're in there. Yes. So, we don't want to check your messages. Like, uh, you know, one of those things. Right. Just get in here. Yeah. If you don't know what we're a not, Patreon we're not is, removing you. go to patreon.com slash destiny reset, where for as little as $1 a month, you can support the production of budget of our show, just like the Guardians we just named. You get a few perks. Of course, you get a shout out. You get your gamer tag posted on our website, and you get a, access to that channel we mentioned that's just for our Dirt Fan patrons and supporters, where you get to ask us behind the scene questions like, what kind of coffee I'm drinking? And... What were those edit things I heard and what happened? And, you know, why aren't y'all better at what you do? Stuff yes, like that. right. Dude, 199 episodes in. And I realized last week there was a little section we didn't edit out where I said, I'll edit this out. <laughs> yeah, that was a funny. It was, I think it was You're the like, 199th hey man, episode. Dude, was this this week or last week? I'm like, I think that happened last week. You're like, I did not yeah, notate it. I didn't yeah. Even... I, Reading an email and I'm like, what? That. Wait, what? usually we proofread emails, you know? Yeah. Anyways, if you caught it last week, uh, or I think it was a week before, it's a nice Easter egg now. So there you go. Yep. Go find it. All right. That is the show. Hey, man, where can people find you on the internet? People can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Arrow Knight with a zero. Perfect. You can find me, Cyborg Sasquatch, on Twitter. And then finally, you can find us, Destiny Reset, on Twitter. Also on the web, www.destinyresetpodcast.com. That's your source for all things DRP, including links to subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app of choice. So we're there every morning on Monday waiting mm -hmm. for you on your commute or your long day at work, whatever it is. We'll be there. We'll be there. All right. All right, man. Well. Um.
No new iTunes reviews. Oh yeah, almost that's forgot. Thing. We're at two ninety six, dude. Two ninety six. We almost hit three hundred guys. Thank you, everybody, four more. Four more. Just need four more. Four more. You can do it. And then you can do it. I'll say something silly on the show for you. It's great. <laughs> Apparently, that's not enough. The, or your giveaways. No, I don't think it was a good enough. I think it is. <laughs> instead of in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, All right, dude. Go get some rest. All right. Good night. Until next reset. Have fun playing Destiny 2 and take care, Guardians. <laughs> <laughs>